last session of the day, I uh, definitely understand that there's at least good crowd to expect, and that too, mobile app development, which is the scariest thing on earth now, because people talk about multiple languages, people talk about backend, people talk about connecting it through API, so it's, it's a very difficult, right? So uh, let me uh, start with some questionnaires so that I understand my audience. And uh, before doing that, you should know who I am, right? I know you guys have it on the website, but it's very difficult to go through the website. Getting through the documentation of any uh, tool or uh, API is itself is difficult, right? Reading about some other person is much more. So uh, my name is Vidya Sagar, and I'm a developer advocate at uh, IBM. IBM Cloud and Mobile there. As uh, Pradeep was talking about, I am also a Polyglot de developer. So I write in uh, C-sharp, Swift, Java for Android. I'll say Java for Android specific there. Uh, I write Node.js, so almost all the languages on there. Trying to learn Go, sometimes on Python, if required. So that's my Twitter handle, and also that's my website where I write about all my polyglotism uh, to understand my crowd. So how many of you are mobile app developers? Guys, even a Hello World application is a mobile app. Professionally, hobby, hobbyist, maybe? Hello World? Yep, good. The next question will be, how many of you are, how many of you have mobile? Wrong question. Definitely a wrong question. Maybe, let me ask, how many of you have two to three mobiles, more than two mobiles? Okay, four, mo dual SIM, multiple SIM, all that, right? Because of that, you have only one. So, but in future, right, as mobile is everywhere with everyone, in future, it's expected to have 4.1 billion devices by 2019. So, more than talking to a friend next to us, we talk to him, though he's standing next to us, we'll start talking to him on uh, WhatsApp. We'll say hi on WhatsApp and he'll be standing next to it, next to you and he'll reply back, right? That's that's how the world is. But as Hello World developers, even I am a Hello World developer, mobile developer, uh, we, talk, we talk about development, app design, app experience, People call it as user experience, people call it as user interface. There are multiple things. But this is all through trial and error. We design app, we fail, we learn, we do it again. So what, what simply to define a mobile app is, you have a mobile user interface. It can be an app running on your Android, it can be an app running on your iOS, on Windows, which will be talking to a backend, which is mostly NoSQL database and you have an API in the middle. So it's only three things. And anywhere, it can fail only in these three, right? Agreed? So that's the reason I'm saying design to succeed or design to fail. True? But how many of you, us, what, what is first thing comes to your mind when you're planning to develop a mobile app as a hobbyist? Be, be frank. Platform? Seriously? UI? Okay. Nobody is talking about money. Ads. That's more important, right? Agreed? Think, keep the security thing ag against that. Uh, keep, keep the DevOps, whatever we call it as uh, continuous delivery, continuous integration, keep everything out. What comes first is money. You want to make money out of your app, right? Nobody in this room is frank other than me. So monetization is the main aspect. But if you are trying to build an app for your company, think that this is an enterprise app where a bank, an insurance company, or somebody else will be connecting to your cloud. It can be a cloud running on Bluemix, it can be a cloud on Red Hat, whatever it is, you have to take care of so many parameters, right? If you're a hobbyist, you are developing an app, you don't have a manager sitting next to you and say, deliver this by today in next one hour. Agreed? 
But when you are a company, in a company, you're working on developing a mobile app, you should take so many things, so many parameters into consideration. That's where we have something called mobile first foundation. It's, it's a product. What it does is it gives you that comprehensive security. It gives you that app life cycle management. It gives you that mobile analytics, who is using on which version of uh, Android, which version of iOS, whether it is a hybrid application, and uh, what will be the backend logic engine it, here it will be, push and uh, offline sync to engage your customers on. Uh, let me ask a question. I'm trying to make this more interactive because it's last session and you're too much exhausted. I'll show you the code obviously because I'm, I'm also a developer like you, but developer advocate is where I talk, I blog, I create videos, I do other things other than develop, uh, along with development, I'll not say other than. So how many of you have Android uh, N on your phone? No? Marshmallow? Still there, you're still there, no problem. The reason I'm asking is, if you see this right, app lifecycle management, if your customer or your manager asks you to build the next version of the app and push it to all your customers, right, you can't go and rebuild it again. And you don't have to send, uh, push it on to the store and say, boss, go and download it. You can't do that, right? You should give it to your testing team first, let them test and release it. That's important, agreed? So all these parameters are very much important when you are trying to build an enterprise app, even if you are thinking of a startup, right? The first thing is money, it's right there. But you have to think about the next version, right? Which should be better, agreed? So uh, enough of mobile first foundation and I'll also talk about on cloud, the Bluemix part of it. Uh, before I begin the talk, or before uh, you think of how do I build using Eclipse, mobile first app, uh, these are the various things which are required. I have listed this here because once I upload this onto the website, uh, or on our Eclipse website, you should have all the content, right? So you should have Java, EE, EE, Mars, and above. Maybe 4.5.2 is what I am using. Neon, anything, then you have uh, Java, JRE, Node.js version 4.x and above, Kodova command line, Kodova, why? You'll, you'll, uh, I'll, I'll explain you. Then you, you should have IBM mobile first platform command line interface, and most importantly, an internet connection. Right? That's how we live. We were doing IoT before, it was always there, but now IoT plus internet is a new word. I know, if, if you get bored of my talk, obviously you'll open and see Facebook, Twitter, WhatsApp, connected to internet. So that's one more thing important there. Also before that, one more prerequisite before I talk about, because I want you to go back home and start trying this. Mobile first in Bluemix, make your good apps great, because even if, if, you, are, if you are developed a Hello World application, you should feel it's good. Otherwise you can't go for further. You can't build further, right? So mobile first in Bluemix, we have uh, this running on a container, mobile first uh, server we call it as. It's on Bluemix, it's a service available. Along with your 30 days uh, free registration, you get it there. So the hybrid cloud story, uh, why you need, maybe uh, Pradeep has uh, taken care of that, but quickly if you want, easy to deploy, pay as you go. Because if you want to have a startup in future, it's not that you have to have an infrastructure sitting next to you and the guy next sitting next to that, and he should be up 24 hours, right? Not required. You sh the back end should be taken care of care by somebody else. You should just get a JSON back and start developing your UI, right? User interface, which helps you to get the UX, which is user experience. These are high-end terms used even if you're a customer, right? How, how is the user experience of the app? What is user experience? What is user experience? If you send a WhatsApp message, message and it, does, it doesn't get delivered, there is a failure in user experience, right? 
you are trying to upload a pic to Facebook, it doesn't happen. Either you, whom do you blame first? The guy who has developed the app. Or your internet uh, provider. Ah, sorry, he's the first guy to be blamed. But in reality, the app may also be failing in the back. Right? So that's user experience and user interface. So enough of talking. Maybe I'll get into what, why exactly I'm here. And uh, frankly speaking, I'm a C-sharp developer. Most of you will be, well, how many of you are Java developers? Rivals. Okay, good. The reason I'm, I'm here is before Android Studio, I used to use Eclipse to develop Android applications, being a mobile app developer. That's one reason. Also, we have a mobile first studio plugin on Eclipse to try out. So we are talking about the latest version of mobile first studio, which is version 8.0. So I'll concentrate more on that. So mobile first studio plugin, before this, I gave you all the prerequisites to get started, right? Once you have everything installed, once your mobile first service is set up, which I'll also demo, then here is where we get started. I'll also demo this. The reason the content is here, as I said, this will be uploaded to your uh, uh, event website so that you can download and verify it any given time. So first of all, you will install the Mobile First Studio plugin on, on Eclipse. On top of it, you will uh, install the Time, I call it as Time plugin, T-H-Y-M, which is the hybrid mobile tool. You will in install one more plugin, two plugins there, which will help you to create a new Cordova project, import an existing Cordova project, add plugins to your project, run your project on the appropriate platform. Before going further, how many of you have heard about Apache Cordova? How many of you are web developers, HTML, CSS, and JavaScript? Most of you, the others who haven't heard about Apache Cordova, when I say phone gap, then you may be able to relate, right? So if you are a web developer without losing your skill set or without not like, instead of learning a new language, you can use the same skill set and develop apps. It's pretty straight. If you know HTML tags, HTML title, body, done. You can write an app, I'll show you. So. That's where a time plugin will help you, where it will give you all the Cordova related things, which you can do it on Eclipse. What does Mobile First Studio give? Open Server Console, because we have something called Mobile First Server in the middle, which will help you with the analytics, with app cycle management, and everything. We'll do the heavy lifting for you. We'll preview the app. Uh, I'll, uh, maybe I'll ask the question later. It's an interesting question. Remind me if I forget. Then you can register an app, which will register on Bluemix. You can encrypt the app, pull, pulling. If you have a server, a higher server instance, right, you can pull it to the local, just as if you are doing Git, pull and push. Then you can update even the app. So we'll, we'll look into what exactly this, how exactly this is done on Eclipse. So you can't create a legacy application. Maybe if you are an expert in mobile first, then you'll understand. I'm talking about only version 8.0 here. As I said, you need to have Eclipse Mars or later. Then you do this, you will install Cordova. Then you will install MFP Dev CLI. The same prerequisites which I spoke about, how you install, these are the steps, step by step. And once you have it, you open Eclipse preferences. Maybe I'll skip this because there, there is a demo coming up. And how you install uh, the plugins, that's the part there. Uh, a pictorial representation because I know uh, doc reading through the documentation is very difficult. So that if you are missing somewhere once you go home, uh, maybe this tomorrow being weekend you'll not be able to try. At least on Monday when you go back home and try, want to try this, this is a pictorial representation of what is required there. How do you create a Kodo application? Also, this is a backup for me. If, if my, if demo god is not with me and if it fails, then I'll come back to this presentation and I'll show you step by step. Because I do a bunch of talks and uh, out of 90, out of 100%, 90%, it fails. Even I am running my internet on Airtel, I have to trust Airtel at least for now. Hope it works. 
So importing an existing Cordova project, if you are already a uh, developer, web developer, you already have a Cordova project, you can even import that onto Eclipse. 4.5.2 and above, which is Smart and above, and you can just continue working on it, which will even get MFP onto that particular application. <coughs> Add a new platform to your project. Maybe you are uh, uh, using the latest version of Android, and you want to add the latest version here. You can do that. Codeo is cross platform. You write code once, so that it you will uh, be able to run the same app on iOS, Android and Windows. So you'll not be writing three different HTML files and they'll be rendered three dif differently on three uh, uh, platforms. You'll have the same code running on three different platforms. So you have the option to select the hybrid uh, mobile engine also. So CLI commands, if you want to use, uh, I spoke about opening the server console, pushing and pulling app, update, encrypt, everything can be done via Eclipse. What does each command do? It's difficult to read, but it's right there. Maybe uh, once you once I upload the presentation, you'll be able to. I didn't upload the presentation because most of the people will read through and see this is a new language altogether, right? At least I'll not get this crowd here. That's the reason I didn't upload there. Uh, MFP dev CLI using uh, mobile first CLI commands. If you are not an IDE fan, maybe an uh, Unix or Linux kind of a guy who can write uh, shell scripting kind of a stuff, we even provide that. So the good part is we don't lose the CLI developers, we support them. Even if you are an uh, IDE guy who is uh, familiar with uh, drag and drop, drag and drop of plug and play, these are the words for guys, guys who want to quickly develop an app, we support even that. So whenever you see MFP, don't get confused, it's mobile first platform. Just like IBM being international business machines, we go with long names, then put it short. So limitations, you can't do Cordova prepare. If you go with the time plugin, you'll not see Cordova prepare, where Cordova prepare is to deploy the app onto the store or maybe onto your device. That you have to do, any, anyways you have to do it uh, from your terminal on Mac or command prompt on Windows. Let's jump into a demo. Okay, visible? Uh, I do it this intentionally because I mostly work in the night and I don't want to disturb my wife. And this is the best uh, screen to have it. Trust me, this is a tip. So, Eclipse, which version of Eclipse? Thanks for being with me, guys. Obviously, the same thing people have been showing, help, then you have Eclipse Marketplace. So, okay, it's just pulling everything there. Is it up? Yeah. So what I'll do first is I'll just say mobile first. I'll just search mobile first on the Eclipse Marketplace. So this is going, checking for updates. It's searching, yep. There you'll get two things. One is IBM Mobile First Test Workbench. We're not interested in that for now. IBM Mobile First Foundation Studio 8.0. This is the thing which we'll use. Anyways, it's installed on the machine. You'll just install that. Once that is done, we'll go with the next plugin, which is CHYM, time, the hybrid mobile thing, and look for version 2.0.0. Even that you can install. Once these two are done, so once these two are uh, installed, right, we have to just the what's, what's the next step? As a developer, if something doesn't work, what do you do? On IDE, restart, right? Here you had it mandatorily restart. What's the second step if the code never works? Restart the system. 
as simple as that. Guys, these are developer tips which you need to take care of. So once you restart the Eclipse, right, which it obviously prompts for, you restart the system, you'll be able to get everything, every plugin working there. So this is your first application maybe. So we'll say file new, and you'll not see it here, you have to say other. Then under other, you'll have something called mobile, and under mobile, you'll have hybrid mobile Cordova application project, right? You'll say next. Uh, project thing, project name. I already have first project in my project, if you see it here. So I'll say this is my second project. Then we'll say next. And these are the this is the place where you'll choose the platform, whether you want to build it for Android and also iOS or only iOS. If it is not installed, right, you can do, go and download it, the version you want. I'll go with the stable versions. That's the reason I have iOS 4.2.1 and Android 5.2.2. It's not the versions which you have on running on your mobile. It will be mostly 7.0, 6.0, right? This is Cordova Android version and Cordova uh, iOS platform version. Not to get confused there. So then we'll say, I'll choose both. I want a, a cross-platform application. And then we'll say next, we'll not say finish. This is where we'll choose the mobile first platform foundation version. So it's trying to pull it from, meanwhile it is doing, that. that's the icon for Cordova to make sure. So here you'll check for something called MFP. And uh, when you search for it, right, it gives you a plugin called Cordova hyphen plugin hyphen MFP. We'll just select that and I'll say next. Try to get the latest version of uh, mobile first platform and we'll say next. So on Eclipse, your project is created. So for you, it will be like the first project, but if you see in the bottom, you'll get an update of what exactly it's doing, right? First, I'll show the easiest part, and if you are a CLI developer, I'll show you the difficult part. Then you'll understand the importance of installing plugins on uh, Kodo, uh, sorry, Eclipse and developing a Cordova project. So once this is done, right, we know that just to confirm everything is there, right click on the project, and you should see install Cordova plugin. This uh, makes us sure that the Cordova plugin has installed fine. And right beneath that, you will see IBM Mobile First Platform Foundation with all the options which I was talking about. This confirms that our uh, Mobile First Studio plugin and also the Time plugin has installed. Well and good. Uh, how most of you are uh, Hello World application developers, right? So you have to install an ID. Don't feel bad, even I am a Hello World application guy. Every time I start, I start panicking with a mobile app. So what what are the, how many of you have developed an Android application? Okay, what's the first step to set up the system? Obviously an IDE, right? Android Studio. Then Android SDK. Then, how, how much time it will take for you to set up the Android SDK? Because it's it's not in MBs, it's GBs. Four hours, just to run a simple Hello World application on an emulator. Agreed? Let's see a magic trick. You don't need anything there. I have created the application and uh, let me register this application. And even before registering the application, right, I'll preview the application. Because, okay, the specified platform version is invalid. That's the reason you have a backup. So, preview app. Nothing. The talk started maybe 20 minutes and I'm able to run it on 
Google Nexus 5 and also Apple iPhone 15. Just to make sure that this is live, to make sure that things work. So the most important file will sit is under dub dub dub, which is www. That's called index.html. And uh, here if you see it says device is ready. Right? And uh, if you see on the right there is something called device is ready. I would just say device is ready right here. You see this change right there? I didn't even refresh the browser. And you didn't kill four hours of time to check your Hello World application. Agreed? So that's the reason, that's one of the reasons you can just try mobile first there. And it's all happening live. We, we spoke about the app development. Three parts we spoke about, right? First is the UI design, which is done. Second is the JSON connection part. And third is your backend, which is a NoSQL database. Agreed? And also we spoke about multiple things which mobile first gives you. One of, one is, one of the things is security. You may ask a question, how does the security thing come here? How do you handle it from mobile first side? That's where we have something called mobile first server in the middle, which will do all the heavy lifting. To do that, let me come to the full view here. So I'll go to mobile IBM Bluemix. I have uh, registered, me being an employee, I have more than 30 days, which is 322 days there. So, but if you register, you'll get it for uh, 20 days. Sorry, 30 days there. Uh, once you do that, you'll hit the plus button there, and you'll see mobile. So, once you see mobile there, you'll add something called mobile first, mobile foundation service. A refresh work. If somebody is using Airtel Recharge four G, please switch it off so that I get internet here. Okay. It's taking some time. I don't want to kill time there and make you guys wait. So once you have uh, maybe the mobile thing, you'll add mobile foundation service and you'll set up the service here. Okay, just this. Okay. You can see it here, mobile. That's a tile. You click, you add mobile foundation. I have already created one called mobile foundation feedback. So the reason I am doing is I spoke about preview part. I have to, if I have to talk about push, pull, and also register the app part, I have to have a server in the backend, uh, which here it's a middle where. So that's the server. It will give you an address, which will have the same name, mobile first, mobile foundation hyphen feedback, hyphen server. So where exactly you'll use that URL, the mobile for mobile service URL is here. Config.xml, this is just like your any other configuration files which you have. Uh, here, I'll just open config.xml. 
open the exact code and you have something called MFP server runtime. Runtime is equal to MFP and uh, the URL is we have 10.0.1 something where I will replace it with the server URL which I already have which I have already created. The other good thing you can do is you can even run the server locally if you don't uh, want to trust a cloud provider in the first go itself you can have the server downloaded install it on your system on your laptop and you can try it out. So I am using a cloud URL with 443 as uh, the port there and once this is done right I will go right click and say register app. So what it does is it is registering with mobile first server in the middle which gives you all the analytics and everything. Okay, now when I open server console, it will open my mobile first foundation server console. And I should see the first app registered where I will also see iOS and Android platforms and the like. So this is the MFP runtime and I have my first project registered also with Android and iOS. One more cool feature rather than writing the whole push notifications, you have to tell the server is down. Any question? Yep. Okay. Uh, let me re-register it. Otherwise, or let me register re-register the second project which we created uh, right here. Registered both iOS and Android. Now, when I refresh, you should be seeing the second project also to make sure. So I'll go to IBM Mobile First Platform Foundation open server console which will again launch this second project previously when you saw there was no second project here now it's registered for both android and ios the reason we are doing one more reason is push notification pushing the notifications is very easy you will create a payload with a message saying that uh, this app server will be down from 11 pm to 12 am PST for your customer maybe, but you don't know whether the message is delivered to all your customers. Push notification is one way gate. You just push the notification, it will go to Apple push notification server, it will go to your GCM, Google cloud messaging server and you don't know what is happening on the other side of the wire. But here there is something called active and notifying where you will just give a message and once the message is saved and uh, your user, your customer is opening the app, you will see saying that the server is down. You do not have to do all that push notification overhead. I will not show it here because it is not important but the reason we are, one of the reasons we are using MFP server or mobile first platform server is this. Also if you want to run your server locally, you, you do not have to do a, a different maybe you don't have to do a complete configuration there you'll just uh, install as soon as you come to servers tab here you'll just add a new tab new server called ibm then you'll say webpeer application server liberty and there you'll say localhost i want this to run on my system and once you do that this is what is happening on Eclipse, multiple things. But I have to show you the difficult part, right? Because I was doing it even from, we installed Cordova CLI, you remember, command line interfaces. This is the tough part. You have to remember the command first, that is more difficult. Because I do Cordova, I do MFP, I do bash. so. I have to remember all those 
So I'll just say Cordova create an application maybe. The reason I'm doing this is if you don't want to install the time plugin, you don't want to do all that extra plugin thing other than mobile first studio, you can do this way where you have to manually add the plugin. So I'll just say create Cordova create Eclipse. So it's creating a new project. It should be created by now. Okay. First of all, let me go to root. Cordova create Eclipse Summit. So it's created. I'll just say CD Eclipse. What? I'm on the root, right? Now when I say Eclipse, so the project is created. Now when I have to add the plugin, right, which we, which it automatically did, where I was, while creating the project itself, right, I choose MF Cordova hyphen MFT hyphen uh, plugin. Here you have to say Cordova plugin add. Then I will say Cordova hyphen MFT hyphen Registry returned. I'm missing something. No, that's the plugin name. Just to reconfirm the name of the plugin, you have a folder called plugins. So when I say install Cordova plugin, it will open the registry again just to confirm the name. This is all coming with the time plugin which we installed that gives you all the Kodo options to use. So whenever I say MFP search, oh, plugin is already installed, so it's not showing here. But Cordova plugin MFP maybe. MFP. Yeah. So it's trying to pull the plugin, which we were able to do it easily on Eclipse. Also we were adding the iOS and Android platforms there, right? Again, one more command here. Kodova platform add Android. It'll add all the Android related platform things which we were happily able to do there. Just to make sure that it installed well, so I'll just open the config.xml file which will even show the versions of Android and iOS it installed, the engine versions, while creating here. Similarly, when you go to CLI, it will install the same version of 5.2.2, similarly for iOS. So this is where instead of, yeah. Yeah. Mm -hmm. So initially I installed something called Cordova CLI, right? As soon as I say just add this Android platform, based on the latest stable platform, right, it will pull. If you want to specifically add a platform, then you have to say hyphen hyphen platform and then say 5.2.1 or 5.2.2. Yeah, there are commands, otherwise there is obviously something called help. Any given time if I forget things, I go and hit help, where it says platform is to manage the platform. 
and once I say platform help, right, it will give me the extra commands which I need. So this is the reason I, I was showing the Eclipse. So it's very easy for you to set up everything. Clear? I think uh, I'll take few more questions because we have five more minutes left before we call it off. Any uh, mobile development questions or any cloud related, I'm open to take that. That's an awesome question. Thank you. I forgot to say this. There is something called add device on the top. It gives you a bunch of Android devices, not the 3,000 plus devices worldwide available, at least the main devices available under Android. The main Nexus 7, 6, 5, Amazon Kindles, and Motorola with Samsung. I don't have Windows added the, as a platform. That's why when I try to add uh, any Windows thing, right, it will just say cannot get the HTML page. So maybe if I'm running on a Windows system with everything set up, I should be getting Windows also. Similarly, the main overhead with iOS is you need to have a Mac to develop something. Also, you will have a simulator there, again a simulator compared to Android. So you can add all iOS iPhones and also iOS iPads to quickly see the application. But to rigorously test your app, would suggest to go with the emulator. This is to quickly see your UI, how it looks. But the suggestion is better to go back and uh, run it on an emulator or on a device. That reminds me one last thing. If you ask me the question, how do, do I need to go run it on Android again? No. If you go to platforms here, you get Android and iOS. Right click on Android and go to the IBM Mobile First Foundation thing. Am I on the right path? Up. No, run as, which will give you an option to run on a device, run on an Android emulator. As we have added even an iOS application, right? It will give you an option, run as, run on an iOS simulator. Uh, emulator installation is required because you need to have Android SDK, Android AVD, virtual devices, everything needs to be set up. So to quickly see your UI, that is the browser simulator which we call off. If you want to rigorously test your app before releasing to the store or to your customer, go this way. That's the quick suggestion. Yeah, Sanjay, you have a question? Yep. So I have written a very good blog. Seriously? Guys, <laughs> serious. And it is here. Mobilefirstplatform.ibmcloud.com. I know people will definitely ask this question. So I have added the link there. And also, whatever I have spoken today is available on the website. This is IBM Mobile First. Mobilefirstplatform.ibmcloud.com. It talks about end to end what all I have been doing. And also it has a video. And uh, as you have asked question, I'll give my credentials again. So if you are stuck anywhere, if you have any questions, tweet me, I'll be able to answer. Thank you very much, guys. Appreciate it.